to come to this session. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you again. I'm Abby Hansen, and I am the Senior Sales Solution Executive at Ingram Micro for Microsoft Teams and Secure Collaboration. I actually sit in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, I imagine a lot of you are around this area as well. Um, and today I'm excited to take you through Microsoft Teams. Um, it gets, it's exciting to see that a lot of you are on Microsoft Teams and or are exploring it. And so today I like to make the session very interactive. Um, and through that, I may ask you to put your camera on. If you didn't do your hair, it doesn't matter. If you have a kid on your lap, bring them to the call. Um, that way we can actually show you some of the fun things that we have available. So there'll be a point in time for that. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of housekeeping items um, when we first get started. So if you're in Microsoft Teams on your desktop, you may be in the new version where you're able to pop out this window. If you have questions, raise your hand. Here's the raise the hand button and I will go ahead and um, come over to you. There is also the chat functionality, which is here, which we've already been using, which is great. So again, feel free to interrupt because I want to make sure that this is as beneficial possible. All right. Are there any questions before we get started? Can everyone hear me okay? You just put a hand up if that if you have that. All right. And if you are not on the new version, perfect. Thank you, Ben. Um, if you are not on the new version right down here, there is a toolbar that would have the hand raise function as well. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about Microsoft Teams and secure collaboration. I just have a few slides that I want to go over with you, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the fun stuff, which is the demo and how do we work better every day. <clears throat> so we know that Microsoft Teams is the secure um, hub for teamwork and collaboration, and it's built on cloud security you can trust from Microsoft which includes security, and I saw banking and education and county government all um, in the line over here. And it's important to know that everything that happens within Microsoft Teams is secure and encrypted. So when you type in things that maybe you shouldn't, like a credit card number or a social security number, you have the ability to block that from going anywhere. Um, and that falls into compliance as well. Microsoft Teams and the stack from Microsoft actually has has over 90 regulatory compliances that are associated with it, making it very safe and secure for you as an organization. Um, and there's complete transparency as well. So at the beginning of the call, I let you know we were recording the call. It's very important that we have that transparency with the policies across the board as well. Now, with COVID, the world changed a lot. Um, Pre-COVID, there were 32 million users on Microsoft Teams. As of last week, there are 115 million daily active users in Microsoft Teams. That's over a billion meeting minutes per day. And that is an astronomical. There are so many statistics about how Microsoft Teams has actually transformed the workplace. And you can read what's on the screen here. But one of the things that I love to talk about is getting time back in your work week. Well, I'm a power user of Microsoft Teams. I use it 99.9% .9 of my day. Um, is there a duplicate? There is a duplicate audio. You may need to log out of the live stream portion um, because it's probably duplicating it or if or, or live wire if you're on, you may need to drop that audio. Is everybody hearing that duplication or is it just yourself, John? Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So when I think about it again, I'm in here 99.9% .9 of my day and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, this chick is crazy. Well, I'm going to show you how today. How do we get to be there so that everything is in one location? But it, through Gardner, it's actually been shown Microsoft Teams can get an hour back per day per employee um, if you are using it in its full functionality which if you're thinking about, great, that's awesome, we'll take that one hour times 300 employees. That's 300 hours per day. Think about the week and think about additional projects that are actually revenue generating that you can bring into your organization because you are collaborating effectively through the platform. So when we look at this, Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork in Microsoft 365. Over here, we have the chat 
in the collaboration. You can see collaboration is happening here. We're sharing documents, going back and forth from that perspective. Do a lot of you um, use Microsoft Teams to collaborate on documents or are you still emailing them back and forth? Hopefully not emailing them back and forth because when you email back and forth, yep, <laughs> thanks Laura for being honest. Um, when you email them back and forth, you're not getting all the up-to-date real-time edits. And I'm going to show you how to collaborate within Teams and where it's saved safely as well. You also have meetings and callings like we're in today in this atmosphere. You can make phone calls directly out of Microsoft Teams. <coughs> I've seen across the country that a lot of small businesses aren't opening their doors again, or they're still working at home and have traditional on-prem phone systems. They're losing money because they actually have to transfer those cell phones to their cell phones, pay company cell phone bill or a stipend each month. That system is going unwanted. So you're actually able to redirect that over into Microsoft Teams. And then you have apps and work workflows. So you can see this is the meeting environment. We're actually going to dive into it because since this deck was built, we have a lot more to show from that perspective. Okay, Here's the workflows. And then we also have transforming and collaboration, which we can see happen here. And I'm going to show you that real time as well. We can streamline business processes by adding in Power BI, which is great. So you can have real time analytics at your fingertips. Um, one of the ones that I love with working with a manufacturing customer is they had Surface Go's on their shop floor and they had the analytics coming through via Power BI into Microsoft Teams showing the uptime of their machines. And if a machine were, were to break, they could actually aggregate the data to understand, you know, where is that point where it's breaking um, all the way down to when did the employee come in to actually turn on that machine? And so they were able to improve business processes um, through the Power BI functionality. So some things to think differently about. And you're able to connect on every on every single platform. So I love this. I have a Surface Hub behind me. The other day, my computer went crazy. I transitioned to my hub on a meeting and nobody even knew. Just to test it, I transitioned the same meeting to my iPad, nobody knew, and then to my cell phone. And that's great because you can be on any device, anytime, and anywhere. And I love it because when I interviewed for this job over a year ago, I actually interviewed from Africa. And so it just shows the power of the platform. And then provide enterprise grade security and compliance. Everyone should be concerned about this. You can actually see here that this information was blocked and it's all by turning on those policies and procedures within the Microsoft Teams platform. So running your business on Teams. It's about projects, processes, and people. And you can see here that we're able to build projects out by pulling the teams together, sharing information, assigning tasks and deadlines, schedule and check-in meetings, collaborate on documents, and always have access on up-to-date notes. We are gonna go ahead and actually go into the live demo because I find that to be more beneficial. So give me a moment to do that. Any questions so far? Give me one moment. All right, perfect. I love it, Alex. You must collaborate in teams all the time as well. All right, so now this is where the fun part comes. So I would love it if everybody who is willing to, to turn on your camera. If we do this, it's gonna be a quick period of time and you're gonna be able to see some fun, cool things that are happening within Teams. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Bob. Hi, Frank. Is anybody up for the challenge? <laughs> so Microsoft Teams went through a change in their interface. You can see here, there is nine windows available. But when we actually come up to here in the three dots, we now have a large gallery preview. 
So we are able to see 49 people plus the speaker at the same time. So everybody is popping up here. And this is great. Okay, so if everybody were to come on, everybody would be here in this window. The other really cool part about it is together mode. And this is usually when most people tend to drop on camera because they want to see themselves sitting in a seat. Um, and so we are all here together. It gets bigger. We can wave at each other. We can give high fives up top and just kind of be in this moment. And what's so cool about Microsoft is they are going to be giving you settings. So if you want to sit around a coffee table, you have the ability to do that. It's in production. If we wanted to sit um, in a forest and be outside, and heck, we live in Fargo, so who wouldn't want to be in the forest and pretend we're in nice weather? That is coming. And so the ability to be able to transform through this is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to go back into gallery view. So thank you, Rachel, Frank, and Bob for having your camera on. If you could just leave it on for a couple more minutes, that would be great so that we can see you. I just want to show a couple more things. Okay, so over here in the bottom are some new things. There's the spotlight. So Rachel, you get to look how beautiful. Say hi. When you do the spotlight portion of it, um, the spotlight comes on screen for everybody. Now, it's important, that's nice to know, because if you're doing a company meeting, then that person is going to be paid attention to. The other cool thing about it is you are in charge of your personal experience within Teams. So I can actually pin Rachel, and now I am just paying attention to Rachel. And this is nice because I love shiny objects, so for me to pay attention, it has to be right in front of me. We also have the ability in Teams to fit to frame. And this is really a great functionality as well because um, sometimes somebody isn't on camera the way that they need to. This happened to me a couple of weeks ago. The moment I fit them to frame, I could see them. And I didn't need to embarrass them or say, hey, I can't see you. It actually helped me to be more communicative with that customer. All right. Now, some other cool things I want to show you about before we get further into the demo is this turn on live captions. Now, this comes from your end, okay? So this is part of your personal experience. And when you turn on the live captions, you are able to see here and read everything that I'm stating. So if Bob were to come off mute and say hello, Bob, could you please come off mute and say hello for me? Hello, everybody. Awesome, thank you. You're actually able to see Bob's name down here as well. And that is beautiful because then we're able to pay attention to the conversation, okay? Um, now, when we come back up here to these three dots, we also have a couple more cool things that we can do in here. We have our meeting options. Now our meeting options allow us to do a couple of things. Who can bypass the lobby? So you can actually change this before the call um, and then change it while you're in the call so you don't hear those annoying beeps once you've started your meeting. Announcement callers join or leave and who can present. So everyone right now in this meeting can present, but right now I'm going to go to only me, which is going to make everybody an attendee so they can't take over your environment. Okay. The other part about this drop down is pretty cool is you have your device settings. This is your place to troubleshoot. I am on a job or a speaker right now, but I could move to my desktop speaker if I wanted to. Um, I also have a couple of cameras. I'm on my Surface laptop, but if I wanted to, you can see me on my Jabra Pancast 180 camera. So the transition to go between things is really nice from that perspective. Okay. Also up here, you have the ability to apply background effects. Now, Pre-COVID, all we had was the blur. <laughs> and when COVID hit and distance learning happened, I think we were all crazy and frazzled. And um, one of my twin boys came in completely naked and I didn't have the blur on. So I've learned my lesson, they're not home today. But we have the ability now to upload your own background and also use backgrounds that are here from Microsoft as well. So um, I'm kind of missing college football, so I want to go to the FCS championship game for the Bison. Okay, so you have the ability to standardize that, which is great. All right, any questions so far? Come over to the chat, perfect. All right, other things in here you can do, you can go into full screen, call me, 
stop recording and a dial pad, okay? You also have the meeting details, which shows you everything from the phone number if you need to rejoin the call. Okay, over here where it shows our participants list, we are able now to see that we have attendees and the presenter. Over here on the three dots, I could actually pin or spotlight Adam if I wanted to, or make them a presenter or remove from meeting. If I were to remove Adam from the meeting, he would not be able to reattend. Um, I'm a security geek, and so I want to make sure that everybody who is in the call is supposed to be in the call. Um, so if somebody comes on that's anonymous, I don't know who they are, I will remove them. Okay. You also have the ability here to mute everyone or invite somebody to the call as well. Up here on these three dots, you can click don't allow attendees to unmute. So if you're in education, and my teachers that I work with love this, they mute their students because they're always talking over each other. You have the manage permissions, which takes you to a web browser, shows you the same thing that we just showed you, and then download the attendee list. So when we download that attendee list, it actually comes right over here into the file section under downloads, and we're able to see the attendee list when people have joined and when people left the call. Okay, so this is nice if you need to take attendance for trainings and so forth within your organizations. <clears throat> All right, questions on the participant portion of it. Okay. I want to be able to show you now this hand raise function. So if a couple of you could raise your hand, that would be great. Okay. You can see Bob raised his hand, Laura raised her hand. The minute you raise your hand, it comes up over here on the right hand side. This way I'm able to call on them in order. Okay, so that's great. I can go over here after I've um, you know, spoken to Bob and I can actually lower Bob's hand. So feel free to lower your hands. Thank you for interacting with me, I appreciate it. And then we have the chat functionality here as well. Chat functionality is great we are able to attach documents for collaboration. If we're having an internal meeting, we can make everything look like a normal um, Word document. And I'm gonna show you chat in a new way outside of the meeting. We can also add in emojis and GIFs, and I always add in whatever the first GIF is during calls. Cupcakes look kind of good today. Um, and then there's also applications that you can actually bring into your call if you wanted to. So if I wanted to do the weather during my call, I'm going to be able to do that. It's kind of fun to do things when you have coworkers that work across the country. Okay. Now, what is coming to Microsoft Teams? It's time to get excited. You can raise your hand if you want to, but if you don't want to admit it, that's fine. But how many of you use Snapchat filters? Ah, love it. Thank you for raising your hands. Perfect. Microsoft Teams is going to make you look your best for every single call. So you're going to have the ability to filter yourself. If you're in a dark room, it's going to lighten you up. How cool is that going to be? You are also soon going to see emotions. So if Bob really loved what I said, he's going to be able to click a heart and it's going to come up above his head. If Rachel liked what I said, clapping is going to come up there as well. There's also going to be chat bubbles that are coming so that we can truly be interactive in a meeting environment. Plus, this one, do we have any administrative assistance on the call today? You can raise your hand. If you have an administrative assistant, they're going to love this. Translation is coming to Microsoft Teams. And so our transcription, it's going to be right up here, I imagine, next to the chat button. So everything we say live is going to be transcribed, and you're going to be able to download that after the meeting. Now that's pretty cool. Okay. Some other cool things I want to show you is this meeting environment in the new version actually comes right over here into chat. So if you are here, you can see all of our meeting is here. Same information that we've been having in this call. Up here, all of the meeting files would be stored here. So if this was a reoccurring meeting that you had on your calendar, you're going to be able to see things week after week in one location. You're not going to have to go back to separate chats or go look for anything. It's all right here for you. You also have meeting notes. So if we wanted to go in here and take meeting notes during the call, we're able to do that. 
and it just takes a minute to provision. But you can see here that we can name this action items. And then we're able to come in here and type that out and it follows us, which is great. We also have a whiteboard. And this whiteboard is great for us to be able to communicate with one another, put in notes and actually write out what we're trying to plan as an organization. So you have the text here for those that don't have a pen to write on your screen. So I'm just gonna write hello. You also have the ability to put in stick, sticky notes. And then if you really wanted to draw, we could do that as well. Okay, questions on that portion of it. AW, I don't know what you're trying to say, Frank. <laughs> Abby, I have a question. Where, when those are say, when those white pages are created or whiteboards are created or meeting notes, yes. where do those save in the Microsoft world? Are they in a OneDrive, SharePoint? You can, oh, that is a really good question. Nobody has actually asked that of me. Let me find out for you. I'm gonna take it as an action item on this call and I'll go ahead and put that info right back into this chat, okay? Um, I know when I do my whiteboarding on my hub, that I download, I can actually save from the whiteboard app directly into a team or a channel. So I'm thinking it might be saved into OneDrive, but let me go ahead and check on that for you, okay? Great call out. Any other questions on this portion of it? Okay, so we have the chat back over here again. I wanna show you a couple more things with chat too, but we're gonna do that when we get over to this side. Now up here in the right-hand corner, this is your settings portion. And so up here, you can change your photo. You can see I'm presenting. A new feature that was just released is this appear offline. So if you're really online and you don't want anybody to know, you can go offline, but then you can still work in the functionality. You can set a status message. Um, and then when you do that status message, everybody is going to see it when they try to type up against you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click done. Now it's there. It's also important to know it, that when you do your out of office message, it's going to show up here as well. So when anybody actually types you in Teams, they're going to see that. You also have your settings functionality here. You can change your theme. I like to be in dark mode because it's nicer on my eyes, but if I wanted to, just as easily, I can flip back over to white. So I'll go ahead and keep that on for the rest of the presentation. If you're not in the new meeting experience, like I've showed you, you're going to want to come here and turn that on after the call. After you turn that on, you'll come down here, right click and click quit. And then that should update for you. You have your privacy settings here. You can actually manage who can come through when you're on do not disturb. Turn on read receipts, which I love because then I know that I've actually been paid attention to. And then there's surveys. That's um, basically Microsoft's way of saying, how is your call quality? You have notifications here as well. You can show a message preview. This is brand new. If you take that away, nobody else is going to need to see your business when a message pops up. And then you can turn off play a sound for notifications. I hate the bing, bing, bing that comes through, so I turn that off as well. So I encourage you to explore this because this is all new as well. Here is where you can actually test your devices. Um, if you don't, if you're not in a call, you have your permissions that are here and then phone calls. If Microsoft Teams is, um, if you have your telephony enabled, this is where you would set up your voicemail and who can ring forward. But it's important to note, you can still set this up for Teams to Teams calls. Questions on that part? All right. Here is a great place for you if you work with outside vendors in your organizations and you know they use Teams. You can actually go into their team sites and go in between. So you can see I actually work with a couple of different organizations. Here is the shortcut button. So here you're able to see all of the different shortcuts that are available to you. All right, now we're gonna come up over here to the activity section. This activity section is where I basically look at my Facebook feed in the morning. I'm looking at my Teams feed. So this is where I know if people are engaging with me. My activity are the places that I know that I've done work in. And since I'm in here 99.9% .9 of my day, 
um, I have a lot going on. So by going to my activity, I'm actually going to be able to streamline where I need to go if I need to search for something versus going into the multiple channels that I work in. OK. Now to chat. You can see I have pinned chat. Which I've pinned this up here and I'll keep this open for a week if anybody has questions and then I have recent chat. OK. Um, pin chat, I do pinned chats if I know it's a project I'm going to be working on for under three months. If it's a longer project, I'll start a team for it, okay? Because we don't need to do teams for everything. It just gets to be so much and you lose track of what you have out there. So I actually started a chat with two of my coworkers, but I'm going to go ahead and just start it again so you can see how that's done. I'm going to go ahead and put in Aaron, and I'm going to go ahead and put in Tracy. Okay. Now what's cool about this is that I am able to come over here and name this chat. So if it's a project, I can do that. And it's going to name it as soon as I come down here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just hide these. Hello. I am doing a demo. Want to join? Okay. All right, so now we're in this environment. We can fully see the chat on how you're able to standardize it. You can even insert links, make it look like, um, uh, put in links and things like that as well. And if you have come off of mute, did you have a question? All right, just ask that you mute so we can go through this. If not, um, if you have a question, feel free to interrupt me. I love questions. All right, but down here, we are able to type. So we can do hello, we can bold it, italicize it, um, we can highlight it as well, like one of our participants did. Um, and so that's a great way for us to be able to participate as well. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that and go ahead and click send. We can also make a message urgent or important. So I'm going to write, um, I'm just going to write urgent here. Okay. When we click on this button here, you're going to be able to mark it as important or we're going to mark it as urgent. Now it's important to note that when you mark something as urgent, it's going to ping that person every two minutes for 20 minutes until they answer. So please use it in the right way. I would love for you not to be fired after this by annoying your coworkers. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and just make this a standard message. Okay. We can also do some cool things with collaboration. Now, in the notes earlier, some of you had mentioned to me that you actually send your documents back and forth to be edited. So I am going to go ahead and change your world a little bit, hopefully. We're going to go ahead and upload a document. Replace. Perfect. Thanks, Tracy. I am doing it right now. OK, so in here you can see we've uploaded a PowerPoint. Now what's really cool about collaboration in Microsoft Teams is that you have the same functionality as the desktop application, okay? And so this is my demo file. Um, when we come in here, you can see that Tracy's in here with me and we're going to start collaborating. We're gonna go ahead and change this to technology, okay? Gonna go ahead and take away this hello. And because Advanced AI is built into Microsoft, um, from a design perspective, once it comes up, we're going to be able to change what it looks like. Okay. And then when we see design ideas, you can see that she is changing it on the fly from this perspective. And we're able to do that. Now, what's super nice is I know Tracy's in here because there is a green box around what she is trying to accomplish. And the really cool thing about this is that we don't need to save it. Everything is saved directly into this chat that we can come back to and work on later. It's also great because in the chat, we can add other people all the way back to the beginning of the conversation if we know that we need more hands on deck to complete the project. 
we can put comments in here in Microsoft Teams. So I can do at Tracy, um, please add slide three and hit send. You can also have a conversation. So we're able to go back and forth and communicate via chat on things that we are trying to accomplish. Okay, questions on this portion of it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close out. Now we're back to the chat. Again, we've kind of gone through the emojis, the gifts, um, and things like that. But what's really cool here is that I can actually create a calendar request directly from that chat just by clicking the calendaring button. I can see that Aaron and Tracy are actually busy because they're a different color. And I'm gonna go ahead and just verify when we're able to meet directly from here as well. All right, and I know there was a question earlier that Rachel had, and I wanna go ahead and bring that up really quick because I think it pertains to this portion as well. So when we do the, the calendar portion, Rachel, um, a Microsoft Teams link is automatically going to be submitted right here. And that conference bridge number, the phone number is gonna stay the same, but the conference bridge um, like conference ID is going to change every time. There's actually a 42 number GUI in the back end that changes for security purposes and is never used. So it's never duplicated or replicated for safety reasons. So I hope that answers your question from earlier when you joined the call. Abby, can I interject? I was just curious yep. if that if that conference ID stayed the same for recurring meetings. Um, I don't believe so. I believe that it changes um, just because of the security of it in case it were to get out to anyone else. Okay. Yep. So it's automatic when it sets it, it will change it. All right. So that is that portion of it. Also here you can upload Microsoft Stream. Um, I've noticed that a lot of you are in manufacturing. Maybe you have people that are using teams in construction out in the field. And so one of the things that I love to show during this demo is the Microsoft Teams app. So if you don't have Teams downloaded on your cell phone, this is something I highly recommend that you do. So I'm actually gonna go ahead into the Envision demo and you probably can't see it because I have my background on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that quick. All right, so here is my cell phone. And when I'm in here and I click on the picture section of it and click on camera, I have the ability to take photos directly in this conversation. And this is important because if I have a personal cell phone, I don't want any company information sitting on my personal cell phone. I want it sitting where everything is secure and encrypted. So if I'm on a construction site, I can um, take a photo or I can do a video. If something didn't work right, I can do that. And so you can actually see that I'm recording a video live, okay? I sit right in front of a window, so it is a little bright when I upload it, but you can see how quickly you are able to upload this video, get it back, order a part, or kind of communicate what is happening at work. Okay, and it looks like there is another question. Can you pull files directly in from a network file like both users have? Okay, I'll read that in a second. Um, let me go ahead and just show you this video quick. Hopefully. Okay, you probably didn't hear the sound because I don't have my sound on but when you share your screen there's a little sound button over here that will actually bring video into it now from here in this portion of it these are actually saved up here in the files section so everything is with that chat that is there now i'm going to come back over and actually read the question that john had in front of me Can you pull files directly from a network file share both users have access to, or does the document first need to be brought into Teams and then saved back to the file share? So trying to use the free version until we go, okay. All right, for the second part, um, we'd have to look more into it, but if we are actually in this chat together and you wanted to share documents there, you can actually, um, 
route it there. So you can choose the website or the server. Um, and so right now what we do is you can look for a website, there's SharePoint, you look for it, and then you would put in that URL. So hopefully that helps you there. And I'll get back to you on the second part of that question, John. Or if we want to have a conversation offline, happy to help you there as well. Okay. Other great things too. Um, okay. Oh, are you guys having a contest? This is good. Okay. James, John, or Jamie, John. Yep, sorry. Thank you. All right, now here we go. Here's some praise that you can do to actually um, praise your coworkers. So if you wanted to and you're in a huge group chat for your company, you can praise people. You also have the ability to add in third, pro um, third party project tools like Trello. You have the weather, YouTube, Microsoft Forms, et cetera. And this ta tasks in planning. Now up here in the corner, we have the ability to add people. Now, previously we talked about, you know, I need so-and-so to look at this PowerPoint. You can actually include all the chat history when you put that person into the string. We can also pop out our chats. So you can have multiple chats going on at one time versus having to go back and forth, especially if you're in a meeting environment. And then over here, we can share our screen, make a phone call or do a video call to everybody who is a part of it. All right, questions? Feel free to come off mute if you do have questions. All right, well, we have about 10 minutes left, so I'm gonna come over here and go into the team section. Now you can see over here that I have a bunch of teams that have been going on. Um, and what's important to note that this is the name of the team, so this finance demo. And everything inside of here is actually a channel, okay? So when we, I'm gonna come over to this education demo, you're going to see that there's actually a lock on some of these. Everybody you invite to a team is automatically included in the general section. It's important to note that, but you can break those teams out into private teams. Those will have a lock on them. Those are invite only and only the people that are invited will know that those channels exist, okay? So important to note there. Now, when we come into the general tab here, you're going to see in the post section, this is where everything is sitting, okay? I actually moved over an email using an email address for this channel directly into here for a demo purpose. This is a great way for you to communicate back and forth before you reply to a customer. So you're able to pro solve problems in a more effective manner. The file section is open um, and you can post projects and everything here that you're able to work on. You can also create new projects here by clicking on new and choosing one of the platforms that you would like to create it on versus bringing it up from your desktop. It's important to note that all of this is stored in a SharePoint back end, okay? So if you go in and a project has been overwritten, you can actually go into here and go to version history, and it's going to show you who worked on that project and you're going to be able to go back, okay? And since this is a demo, basically it's just me right now, but you're gonna be able to go into there, All right? Back into Teams. Um, here, you can see I've done a couple of things. I've brought over university announcements. This is a wiki, so you're able to tap into here. I also have a OneNote notebook that I have in here for the education demo. What's really great about this is that you can put your notes in here, objectives, projects, etc., and include it all in this one location. You can also do Microsoft Forms for surveys, and so this is actually just a Microsoft Form it takes probably 60 seconds to create. And you can push it out outside of your network um, to get questions. Or if you do potlucks or t-shirt orders, this is a great way to do that. And then you would see the responses right here, okay? You can also put in websites. So I just put North Dakota State, some reading and math websites, and there's a bunch of other functionality you can do and add such as Microsoft Planner. Questions on this? So far. All right. So over here, you can actually manage your team, add a channel, add a member, manage tags. 
um, and then even get an email address for the team. And so that email address is pretty nice. Again, we talked about that before, just to bring that email into your Microsoft Teams platform. Down here at the bottom is where you can actually join or create a team. And this is awesome because Microsoft just released these templates. You can actually come down here and select a template from project management. There's ones for finance. There's ones for healthcare, government. All of it is pre-built for you to help you think about how you should be organizing or what you should make sure you're not you know, missing out on within your organization. So when you look at this finance demo, this actually came directly from one of those templates. So you can see all of the different things that have been put forward um, for that team. And then in there, you can create them as private channels or public. Public are searchable by everyone in the company and private is invite only. All right. Here's your calendar section. Don't freak out when you see mine, um, but here you can create a new meeting or do a meet now. I use the meet now functionality all of the time when I'm trying to um, do a training video for my team. You can record it and it will actually save into your OneDrive. So here you would title it, add required attendees, set your date, set your reoccurring, and then you're done. What's really cool is if you add it to a channel and you want to have a reoccurring meeting there or just a meeting, everybody in that channel is automatically included. Now that's really cool. That saves us time so that we're not forgetting anybody that needs to be off of that string. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of there. The next section is the telephony portion. Since I have the Teams app on my cell phone, I no longer ever have to give out my cell phone number. That's beautiful. I can even shut off my quiet hours on my Teams app on my phone so people can't reach out to me. So here you can see the speed dial. You can add new groups. You have your contacts that are here as well. You can bring in people from outside of your organization into this. You have your history which is awesome. A lot of my legal customers love this because it gets down to the second for billable hours. And then you have your voicemail as well. So you can actually see Mr. Brad Gorder, if anybody's worked with him at Network Center, you know, he left me a voicemail. I leave this up here as an example, but it's actually going to go ahead and um, transcribe it for you. I'm not going to show you that part of it. You just have to click on it and you'll see it and it sends it to email. And then you can dial in and out. With the dialing in and out of Microsoft Teams, you have call park, call transfer, um, you have hot, cold transfer, hot transfer. There's just a great way for you to be able to communicate in one platform. And then right here, we have the file section. Um, so these are everything we've recently worked on. We also have Microsoft Teams. So this is all of the files that have been worked on in the Teams you're a part of and the downloads. Plus your OneDrive is connected, which is a great portion of it as well. I choose to pin my OneNote. And then there's Microsoft Shifts. Now Microsoft Shifts is part of the enterprise licensing of Microsoft. Um, you can actually create a team with a shift so hourly employees can exchange shifts there. They can log in and log out and time keep. Um, and so that's a great portion of it as well. I have my email in Microsoft Teams as well. Um, and then down below are your apps. So there's over 660 certified apps that Microsoft has certified to bring to market for all of these different industries. Mm. And then down below is the help section. You have topics, you have training. So if this moved a little fast for you today, which it does, all of these videos are under three minutes. You're able to see what's new and coming with Microsoft Teams. And then also the about section. And that concludes my demo for today. Are there any questions or anything that I can go over for you? This is your time and feel free to come off mute, raise your hand, et cetera. <coughs> yes, um, I'm gonna go over here. John, what is your question? And feel free, you're on mute, John. How do you, <laughs> um, you can work through your uh, network center rep um, if you want to. Yes, yep. 
Um, do you have a rep at Network Center that you work with? If not, here is my email and we will make sure we get the right person in there. Max, I love my Surface Hub. I actually um, went in there and um, reconfigured it so that it's wind on a Windows 10 OS. So if I wanted to, I'm able to go into it and treat it like my computer. Um, but when I worked at Microsoft, the hub was in every room. It makes connecting to Teams meetings so much smoother. The clarity with the camera is great and being able to whiteboard and um, connect as a team is phenomenal. So if you want more information on that, Max, too, my email is there and I can connect you with Network Center, but here at Ingram, we also sell those. <laughs> I love the heart. Is there an app that serves as an in-out board versus having to look at each person separately? Laura, I guess I'm not understanding. If you want to come off mute and explain, that would be great. Sure, we have a third party in-out board that kind of looks like Excel where each person's listed and it says when they're going to be back in the office, et cetera. And I want to get rid of that and I want to move it to like Teams, for example, so that they can update it on the fly. Like when, if they're out of the office, they can update when they'll be back yeah. from their cell phone and it would go to everybody. But we don't want to have to go look at everybody's um, individual status. You know what I mean? We'd like it all like how we have it now. Like it looks like Excel. Okay, so if you're if you're here and you actually go to calls, you're going to be able to see everybody's presence awareness and you can see that they're away. Maybe yeah, but we want more detail than that. We want away and like what job they're at, what city they're in, people oh. with details. Yep. Um, let me think about that for a moment if there is a way to solve that for you. I will take that as an action item. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Integration with, um, and Laura, can you put your email address in the window too so that I have it and we can reach out to you afterwards. John as well, I gave you my, or here is mine if you want to just send me an email with that question. Okay. .com. Is there integration with Cisco Call Manager to replace Jabber? Yes, you can bring Cisco into Microsoft Teams. Um, maybe a full team whiteboard for in and out statuses only. So like the, bringing this one up. Rachel? Yeah, I was just commenting on something maybe Laura could try. Yeah, oh, I love how you're collaborating because you can see them all here. My kids do their spelling on my um, Surface. It's actually been pretty nice or on my hub, um, but you can actually create a bunch of new whiteboards that are here as well. So if you had that up in a team, you could actually put, a, put the whiteboard up in a team and create it that way. That way you would have it all there. That's a great sure. idea. Yes, it is. Yep. There is integration with spark boards. I'm pretty sure, Leon, um, we can look at that as well. So perfect. Any other questions? All right, well, my contact information is here. Feel free to reach out with any questions. I'm gonna go ahead and immediately engage your network center rep on that as well, um, just because I'm a partner that supports them. Um, but I really appreciate everyone being on the call today. Um, it was truly an honor to be with you. And if you have any other questions, let us know. Have a great day and stay warm if you're in our area of the country. Thanks so much and have a great day.